hand, including addressing the debt limit. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has warned the U.S. could run out of money to pay its bills after December 15th if lawmakers don't raise or suspend the debt ceiling. President Biden's ambitious social spending plan is also still awaiting a vote in the Senate. CBS News Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent and Face the Nation moderator Margaret Brennan joins me now for more. Margaret, great to see you. Let's start with the issue surrounding the debt limit. What exactly would happen if the U.S. defaults on its debt and what options could we see lawmakers take in the upcoming weeks? Well, we know that both uh, Senate Republican and Democratic leaders have said they will not allow the U.S. to default on their watch. So they are right. trying to say that's not a risk. Um, we have seen the U.S. credit quality downgraded, uh, and it is this sort of game of chicken that we go through uh, with a pretty high cost attached to it to uh, use this leverage um, to, to force through other things at the last minute, because this is one of those um, must-act items of raising the debt ceiling. Uh, what we know is that the Republican leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, has said Democrats need to go it alone, do it alone, because of a past dispute. He was not happy with how uh, Democrats handled a, a separate issue earlier on this year and said, OK, fine, if you're not going to include us in legislating the Build Back Better bill, that massive social mm -hmm. spending bill with preschool and, and the like included in it, then you handle this one on your own, too. So that means this is going to be uh, another situation where we're watching Democrats and figuring out whether they can settle this within their own party and get this uh, debt ceiling raised. There's, there's also debates out there and speculation, oh, should we do away with this kind of uh, spending limit entirely? But at this moment, it is just about December 15th, which is the date on the calendar the Treasury Secretary has said uh, it, it is really the hard deadline for her. Right. And, and trying to get Congress to agree on anything is difficult, let alone yes. trying to change the rules. Kind of in a, in a similar vein, Margaret, Congress is also trying to pass the annual defense bill known as the National Defense Authorization Act. Usually this is receives bipartisan support, but it's also currently held up in the Senate. Tell us what's happening on that front. So the usefulness to uh, a politician in a must-pass bit of legislation, which is what the NDAA is in terms of defense spending, is that they can use it as a vehicle to get other things they want passed, right? To say, oh, you really need that? Tuck this inside. That's what happened in terms of a delay. Um, Senator Marco Rubio, Republican from Florida, uh, said he wanted to tuck inside this big $780 billion um, bill, uh, something in regard to further restrictions uh, on products made in China that exploit uh, Uyghurs. That's the uh, ethnic minority mm -hmm. in China, Muslim majority uh, group, who are in concentration camps and being used as forced labor. There are a number of restrictions already on the books in regard to purchasing uh, and trying to discourage people from purchasing goods that are made with forced labor. And Senator Rubio wanted to add another layer on there. Now, th there's policy making in there, and there's some um, ins and outs of, of whether the House would have to act before the Senate. But the long and short of it is that that addition held up the passage of the NDAA this week, and it might get pushed into the new year. Uh, so, <laughs> as you know, uh, as you just said, it's hard to get anyone to agree on anything. The one thing they do seem to agree on is kicking the can down the road for a mm. few more weeks. All right. Well, Margaret, you know, uh, I'm also really eagerly uh, looking forward to your interview on Face the Nation this weekend with the U.S. Surgeon General about the Biden administration's response to the Omicron variant. So many people are now concerned about this being here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And the White House strategy, which has been unveiled recently, focuses on vaccinations and boosters. But there's really not been any talk about lockdowns or restrictions. And, and people are wondering what's next. And uh, uh, and what medical experts are saying about these new measures? Well, the public's weary of nearly two years of this pandemic and all that has come with it. And the Biden White House knows that. The president knows that, which is why on Monday he said no lockdowns. Uh, mm -hmm. And then yesterday said schools won't be closed. And in fact, he wants an, the CDC to come up with a new guideline for policy that would allow students to stay in the classroom after being exposed, a test to stay program. So they're trying to manage around this uh, and manage around the pandemic. The thing that could be the big risk is what you laid out there is 
is this new variant, this mutated version of the virus, um, in some way able to pierce the tools that we have now? Uh, and we won't have the answer to that question for weeks to come. We will ask Dr. Murthy uh, if there's any early indication in the studies that are being done here in the United States, but really all eyes are on South Africa and those scientists mm -hmm. who first discovered it and are working furiously um, to, to come out with more conclusions from this initial research. We have preliminary studies. We don't have conclusive ones to date. Right. I, I know that uh, we're all looking forward to learning more about Omicron so we know just how concerned we actually need to be. Margaret, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. And you can see Face the Nation right here on CBSN. It streams at 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. Eastern every Sunday. Coronavirus cases are increasing across Europe once again. Concerns over the Omicron variant are now forcing many countries in the region to implement new restrictions. Ian Lee reports from London. 